Welcome to a brand new episode of Brain Pickings, our popular podcast for HR professionals, entrepreneurs and leaders. My name is Leslie and I'm the founder of Zigzag HR, supporting you to stay ahead of the curve and challenging you to rethink, reboot and retool HR. Be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're eager for more insights. The pressure on companies to tackle environmental, social and governance issues continues to rise. A broad set of stakeholders, including customers, employees, investors and suppliers, are increasingly challenging companies to respond to concerns about climate change, the consumption of natural resources, changing societal values and economic and political instability. Sustainability is not a compliance exercise. As demands for social accountability rise, so do demands on leaders. Making sustainability core to the DNA of leadership is essential. In other words, sustainability is a leadership imperative. But what makes a sustainable leader? What are the qualities and capabilities needed? And who are the forefront runners that can inspire us? Well, let's ask two experts. Fleming Kerr, Global Practice Lead, MU Sustainability Practice, and Hilde van der Schelden, Group Director and member of the Global MU Sustainability Practice. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Well, it's a Thank pleasure. You. Actually, you're having me because I'm uh, I'm uh, at this wonderful location here in uh, in Brussels, in Belgium. It's absolutely fabulous. Nice to be here. <laughs> um, okay, to um, to set the scene, sustainability is a hot topic. The sustainability development goals are the blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future uh, for all of us. Environmental, social, and governance factors have become global imperative, placing companies under increasing scrutiny. This heightened stakeholder focus means that companies, boards and leaders are confronted with new expectations, yet few of them are actually equipped to govern ESG issues. What is the situation currently? Well, I, I totally agree to, to your introduction here. Um, I think the major challenge is the complexity and also the unpredictability mm -hmm. because we're in a situation where we not only focus on, on climate challenges, we also focus on, for instance, supply chain challenges. We focus on, on resource scarcity and we flo focus on, on in, in the inflation at the moment. And moment. Um, so, so, so it's one thing among others, but, but it all adds up to, uh, you can say, the climate challenges. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of these things and challenges can actually be, be solved if we focus on sustainability as a leadership imperative. Mm -hmm. and, and, and therefore, we need to do it. Uh, and, and basically we need to do it because we want to do something good for, for the generations that come after us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and what we see, it's about minimizing risk mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to higher chances on business opportunities yeah. and uh, results. And I think also in our global practice, what we see is for global corporate organizations, it's even more challenging because legislation is uh, quite yes. different in the East, mm -hmm. in the West and in Europe. So in that perspective, it's very, very complex and it's difficult to navigate. And we need people that are able and willing to do so, to take mm -hmm. the lead in, well, a very complex and difficult environment. environment. Okay. Ex exactly. Yeah. And, and uh, one thing that um, you can say top CXO teams and, and boards, they have not been used to, to dealing with is, is the three Ps. I mean, the, the profit and the planet and the people. Mm -hmm. They've been focusing on, of course, profit and prosperity uh, in, in a linear way in, mm -hmm. in, in their own industry, for instance, um, creating value for customers and for their own organization and also, of course, for their investors. But, but now they need to also look at the people perspective, not only mm -hmm. their own organization, but they need to take a, a more holistic approach and yeah. look at a total ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So so when they do that, we also talk about people in, in the society, we talk about people in other countries and, 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 and things like that. And then you have the planet aspect as well, mm -hmm. meaning the, you can say the climate aspect that they also need to look into. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a much larger perspective we're looking at and it, that makes all the complexity basically. Yeah. Okay. And the pressure to act is very yes. high. We had the songs about saving the planet in the 70s. And yes. then we have CSR in the 80s, 90s, Nellis even, where we had some good initiatives, mm -hmm. but it was not integrated in the strategy. Mm -hmm. And now really it's forced by legislation, but also by societal yeah. uh, imperatives. Uh, people are asking for uh, green investment possibilities. Yeah. Uh, consumers are asking for, uh, well products that are 
circular or at least um, good f for them mm -hmm. and for mm -hmm. health. So there's a lot of extra elements today that were not there before that mm -hmm. will help us to do something and we need to do something. And I think that's clear now in Europe, especially with uh, the directive, which was voted uh, two weeks ago. Yes. So there will be uh, mm -hmm. uh, reporting needed, okay. which will hire the transparency. Mm -hmm. So companies will be forced not to do something, just something, and then do uh, some greenwashing. Mm -hmm. That will not be longer possible. And so that is something that is really uh, on top of mind of a lot of boards mm -hmm. and uh, leaders, but they do not always know how to, how to do that. that. Yeah. yeah. So, but now that we've accepted that sustainability is a leadership imperative, how do we move forward? So how can we evolve from that compliance to, to more commitment driven? Where, where, where should we start? Well, I, I would say the first thing is to, to accept that the company is part of an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you just have the traditional approach that, that your company is part of a supply chain, delivering products and, and, and solutions to, to end customers, um, and, and, and you ignore the ecosystem, mm -hmm. then you won't succeed. Mm -hmm. Because you need to merge sustainability with strategy, and that is the biggest challenge. Because what we actually see out there is that a lot of top executives and a lot of boards, when they work with sustainability, they start looking into sustainability as an appendix to, to the organization yeah. strategy. And they're not fully incorporate sustainability and measures and way of thinking and organizational development into their core strategy. And they need to do that because if they don't do it, they will just be compliant. Yeah. Uh, and that's not enough because all companies will have to be compliant in the future because of the, for instance, in the in the EU, the taxonomy and the um, CSRD that is uh, rolled out here by mm -hmm. the end of December. Um, so if they're just compliant, they're just one among all the other companies mm -hmm. and competitors, but you need to outperform. And yep. that's why you need to move your organization and company from being, uh, um, you can say, um, uh, compliance driven to be commitment driven in, in, mm -hmm. in some way but you also need to to do things in the right order so to speak and and, and something that we also see and I hope you agree with me on that Hilde <laughs> is that a lot of these companies they start working with the, with the metrics mm -hmm. um, but in order to be able to work with the metrics documentation and reporting you really need to have the leadership in place first. You need yeah. to focus on the right way of, of leading your organization, the process and things like that. You need to have the right understanding at a leadership level. But you also need to build the right organization. So it's it's first, in, in reality first, it's about leadership culture and, and, and um, capabilities. And then second step will be to be on organization people and capabilities and mindset mm -hmm. and the third step will then be to work with the metrics okay because if the other two elements are not in place then you'll be sub-optimization mm -hmm. sub-optimizing sorry and, and and you'll not be able to outperform uh, yeah and we truly believe that um, if you just are compliant you will mm -hmm. not be sustainable mm -hmm. sustaining it's about surviving but much more about thriving mm -hmm. and then you must have part of sustainable mindset in your organization and it's not because we must do it but because we want to do it because we truly yeah. believe that we have a value to bring not just to shareholders but also to to our planet and mm -hmm. to the people around us so in that perspective it's a whole set of knowledge that you need to bring in processes yeah. that you need to put in place uh, organization and especially the mindset Okay, so when evolving from compliance to more commitment-driven leadership has the biggest uh, impact on, on process and results, what makes the sustainable leader? Well, in, in a way, I see um, there are different um, capability requirements that we need to look into when mm -hmm. we talk about um, effective leaders in, in this matter here. Um, you can say, first of all, it's basically about having the right combination of capabilities, mm -hmm. the motivation, and the basic skills and the toolkit should mm -hmm. be there. But you also need to look into to the capability requirements, and, and they have actually changed a lot um, in, in, in this new era, you can say. Um, years back, 
all leaders they have been educated at business schools i mean the traditional way of of uh, of educating leaders and 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 their learnings are based on that so that when they run their companies mm-hmm. i'm not saying everybody are, are doing this but but when many of these leaders today are running their companies they're doing it in as i mentioned before the linear way yeah but now you need to have a, a holistic approach to this and that means that you first of all you need to when we talk about capability requirements you need to be authentic purpose and value driven mm-hmm. meaning your organization needs to believe in what you're doing and what yeah. you're saying it should be for the greater good you need to base that on very strong self leadership skills um you need to uh, have a long term approach to developing yeah. not only your organization but but your entire uh, uh, delivery chain and also when engaging with with stakeholders outside the industry for instance because you need to deliver on the three piece that, that mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. mentioned previously and on top of that you should also focus very much on courage and resiliency because there will be many setbacks in this journey you cannot define what will happen in the future mm-hmm. it's very hard to be predictive in an unpredictable uh, predictable world uh, so you need to build resilience into you the way you lead and also into the organization and the processes and then the f- third thing is that when it comes to capability requirements that you need to in a way uh, focus on on triple bottom line uh, innovation mm-hmm. triple bottom line again the three p's um meaning that back to to the original one it's not a linear process you mm-hmm. need to deliver on all the three p's not only one of them not only profit but also people and planet and then you need to the fourth one uh, when when we talk about capability requirements you need to focus on multi stakeholder governance yeah because it's much more than the industry Mm-hmm. It's a society. You got NGOs looking into your company. You got, for instance, um, you got um, what do you call it? The uh, activism. Gov- yeah, the mm-hmm. activism. You got governmental institutions. You got um, you got end users, and and you also got all the members of the uh, supply chain looking yeah. at you and seeing what are you doing, how are you doing these things, how are you working with mm-hmm. documentation and with your leadership skills and organization. And then finally, the fifth one is that you need to navigate complexity. Yeah, and that is also something completely new, I think. Yeah. So in that perspective, you could summarize: you need brains mm-hmm. because it's highly complex, and you need to work with unpredictable uh, elements of the future. Mm-hmm. You need to collaborate with people, so mm-hmm. you need to be open for collaboration. You must be able to formulate a vision. And a meaningful purpose, because without meaningful purpose, it will be very hard to attract people in your organization. Mm-hmm. You see youngsters asking for a reporting on yeah. uh, ESG and uh, how does a company cope with biodiversity, with mm-hmm. um, with climate change, uh, with social um, elements. So, in that perspective, if you don't have the power mm-hmm. to create a meaning meaningful purpose it will be very very hard to attract future talent yeah, and talent agree. you need to keep your operations going to have profit finally to invest in mm-hmm. sustainable matters um but also to attract um high level skilled people because it's a lot about what uh, what you mentioned Fleming innovation mm-hmm. so that means um creativity brains on technology on science which was not always as important as it is today. As it is today. Yeah, I agree. Okay. And you can also mm-hmm. if I may add one thing more. I mean, you also need to be very empathetic as as a leader and very inclusive as a leader mm-hmm. because you need to accept the fact that in this situation with with um, the complexity and and all the regulations and and directives for instance in Europe um and all to the multi-stakeholder universe, mm-hmm. you don't as a leader have all the answers. You need to look for these answers also outside your industry. Uh, they they might come from co- um, collaboration partners, strategic partners. It might come from your organization, but you really need to to open up. Mm-hmm. You need to be open to criticism. You need to be open to feedback, and you need to even work searching with your feedback, asking feedback, not just being open to feedback, but asking different stakeholders for feedback. Maybe Ex- exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. and and. I would add one thing more. Maybe you can comment on that um, because I think you know more about that than I do. Uh, but one thing we also see is that uh, you can say the <clears throat> fluent intelligence mm-hmm. 
of modern leaders today. Mm-hmm. I mean, fluent intelligence is, is basically the way that you handle and deal with problems you have not been exposed for before. Fluent intelligence. Fluent intelligence. Okay. Meaning that one way of, of handling problems is that you base it on things that, that you have learned in the yeah, past. That's not But in the new exactly, context, yeah. the new mm-hmm. era, lots of these challenges will will be things that you have not been exposed to before mm-hmm. or, or, or been asked to solve before. So you need to, in a way, use your intelligence mm-hmm. to use these unforeseen problems. Okay. Meaning you have you you have nothing in in your baggage or or backpack that can actually help you. Mm-hmm. But you have your intelligence, and that is also some something new. I think we see. It's uh, something new and something very important. And I think to summarize what you said, um, I think it's the time of the egocentric mm-hmm. leader has finished. Yeah. It's the time of the ecocentric. Leader. Yeah, and eco means all what was said about listening, opening up, uh, mm-hmm. combining unknown, known expertise, um, but also general insights and yeah. trusts and and courage also sometimes yeah. to go a bit upstream or against other opinions which are still there today. Uh, mm-hmm. Some people think we have other things uh, to do about the inflation and financing companies mm-hmm. much more than uh, being busy with the, the planet and the people. Yeah. It still exists, um, yes. not in uh, a lot of companies, but still you see some CEOs fighting with the board on those issues yeah. because they are aware of what is happening. They have that intelligence. They have the way of looking at the world to become a sustainable company, but mm-hmm. still sometimes need to convince their shareholders. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm from, from my, just a personal perspective, I'm traveling a lot, uh, not only in Europe, but also working with leaders in the APIC area and the US as well. And and when I talk to these leaders, um, one of the most critical aspects here is self-leadership mm-hmm. because they need to be really strong at effective self-leadership. And handling that part, handling the inner game, meaning the self-efficacy and, and, and how they work with themselves, for instance, but also handling the uh, the outer game, as we call it, of, of self-leadership, meaning how they actually impact and, and how they approach uh, their surroundings, not only own organization and so mm-hmm. on, but how they impact and, 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 and what kind of results they, they actually create. And in that lies the ability to, to accept feedback yeah. and also be open to feedback cultures. Yeah. Okay, so and when you're traveling around uh, the globe, are there some forefront runners, some companies that are really excelling in, in, in doing this that, that you, you want to share with us? I, I will say, then, then I, um, I would have to log into my own backyard. Um, I'm, I'm based in Copenhagen, okay. um, and I believe that when, when we look at it also, if we look at uh, these different uh, research projects and so on from, from for instance, um, the European Commission and, and uh, major business schools around the world, then the front runners are mainly in the Nordics. Okay. Uh, it is companies like Ørsted, uh, the energy supply company. Mm-hmm. It is, um, say, also a company like Maersk, um, yes. Um, yeah. uh, uh, um, very far ahead, I believe. Uh-huh. Um, they have go far beyond regulations because they have seen that they need to do something extra, mm-hmm. and they need to be at the forefront of this development. Uh, and and they, as I believe, it's hard for those kind of companies just to wait for the politicians to make the decisions. Can't so, so they will yeah. make the decisions. Uh-huh. I, I came home uh, last week. I spent four days. Uh, at a very big event in, in Munich. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the uh, European semiconductor industry who met there, meaning that we had most top CEOs from, from uh, and, and top CXOs from companies like uh, Samsung, it could be Intel, it could be IBM. Mm-hmm. All those manufacturers uh, were, were gathered there and they also talked about these issues here. And top of the agenda, all the speakers, when they were on stage, was sustainability. We no. need to do something no. and we no. need to focus on sustainability as a leadership imperative. Mm-hmm. It's not enough just to say that we will work with the regulations when, when, when they are issued and for instance and, and launched. They needed to do something up front and do even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. In, in Belgium, I think we, we have some examples, but mm-hmm. they are very often in the born already in the green 
area and in circular industry okay. because I saw the business opportunity. Yes. Yeah. And we see the struggle of more traditional companies because they are confronted with a huge transformational issue uh, going net zero, for example, in the steel industry. Uh, they have a huge, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and complex uh, issues to solve and therefore leadership is needed. Also, Elia is already mm -hmm. quite good okay. and uh, active on this yeah. domain and uh, looking forward to become even better and, and to make a difference uh, in that perspective. Okay. And I think companies that will be able to make the difference on that perspective will be the winners of the future. Yeah. And like you said, um, the ones waiting for regulations to be pushed to do something mm will most probably not be the ones um, that have uh, or the winners in the competitive uh, area mm -hmm. they're working yeah. at. Um, now, okay, so how, how can we support leaders in becoming more sustainable leaders then? Well, that, that's really a good question because it's a key question in, mm -hmm. when, when we look at the future. Uh, we've got future generations um, uh, who, who are going to, to develop themselves and also go, go through certain programs. But what we see here is that we need to move away from generic management development programs mm -hmm. or leadership development programs and into tailored programs that takes not only the context, the corporate strategy and the situation into account and the long-term goals, but also looks into the specific roles that these leaders who are going to attend these programs, mm -hmm. that they actually have in the company and, and what kind of goals they are supposed to deliver on in mm -hmm. short, mid and long term. Um, and, and we know for a fact that only 10%, only 10% of leaders, leader development programs, management development programs, whatever we call it yeah. internally or externally, um, only 10% of those programs, they actually have a significant effect mm -hmm. um, on results or impact on results. Meaning the rest, the 90% is it's just effective. money yeah, wasted. wasted. So we, we really, and, and the, the, the trigger mm -hmm. here is to avoid the generic programs. Yeah. I mean, for instance, we're working together with, with a business school in, in the UK, uh, Henley Business School. Mm -hmm. um, they, and, and together with them, we, we have developed a, um, a certification program in, in sustainable leadership. And what we did there was that we based the program on, you can say, some generic aspects in, in a more general program, but then mm -hmm. we add the assessment to it and we add individual coaching, so okay. coaching sessions to yeah. it as well so that we have, you can say, a group development and we have the individual de leader development. Mm -hmm. And that means that we have a, a, a specific or tailored um, leadership development program because it, it will be, or it is tailored to each company's own context and situation yeah, absolutely. and each yeah. leader's situation yeah. and that is what we need to do okay because of the complexity and because we need to in a way try to uh, predict the future mm -hmm. in this complex uh, and, and unsecure world yeah it's about uh, so a lot about self-awareness mm -hmm. know who you are what's your impact what's your shadow in the organization yeah. And what's your impact, social impact? Because if you don't know who you are, it would be very hard to know mm -hmm. how you impact people in the right way, in a sustainable way. So it's pretty much all oriented on the person, individual, and then as a group, as a management team, how will we proceed with common goals and a work on sustainability and bring it into the organization. So it's much more individualized than it was before context-driven, specific context, and uh, on a personal level. Mm -hmm. so, so our advice, I think, forget everything about one-fits-all solutions when yeah. it comes to leadership development. Absolutely. And also in the selection. Definitely. Um, now choosing those right leaders, building strong boards, strong leadership teams will be crucial to success. Actually, that's what I'm hearing here right now quite a challenge for top executives. What are then the main issues to tackle? What problems maybe need specific attention here? Well, I think there's first of all, the lack of knowledge and experience mm -hmm. in that domain. Uh, there aren't that many specialists uh -huh. ready to take 
everything. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's a shortage and that means also there's in general a shortage on the labor market, but especially for these kind of profiles. Mm -hmm. So you need to look differently to find the right leaders to work with those issues. And most probably it won't be the experts that Mm -hmm. will be the right ones because they need to be able to influence people to work with stakeholder management. So it's it's a different way of working. So we should look differently to the Mm -hmm. profiles um, that will fit in the demands of the companies. Um, I think there's also in Belgium, but you see it also in neighboring countries. I don't know how it's in Denmark, but that sometimes... The company is ready, but the board isn't, or the mm-hmm. body board is very ready, but they don't have the right leadership to execute uh-huh. it. So you you see a lot of elements uh, having an impact on um, what will happen in the short term in terms of sustainable leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, so the challenges are, are multiple, and uh, I think anyway. It's about people who will solve those challenges. It's people that bring results. It's people that influence uh, boards. But there is a need for change and for more, I think, diversity also on board level. You see that it's not always on the agenda of the board. It's the traditional things like financial reporting Mm -hmm. and legal risks that are there, but less the other risks. And the other risks are very, very high, especially today. And there's kind of awareness, a kind of courage also for some people uh, to do things differently because we were used um, to do things and they delivered, like you said, we were trained in business schools to deliver profit and to be efficient. Mm -hmm. But nowadays it's it's other elements that will become much more important to be successful and to survive and thrive. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the awareness and is not always there or not enough uh, to make us move as quick yeah, as necessary. As necessary. And, yeah. and I also think that uh, to 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 comment on that because I totally agree, of course, is that that leaders then they need to find and boards they need to find some way of of predicting the future in an unpredictable world, mm-hmm. meaning that we need to look into the group dynamics of yeah. leadership teams, because these leadership teams they they will be you can say um, defined on a new set of um, capabilities requirements, first of all. Um, you need to look into the diversity aspect, of course. You need to look into far more diverse leadership teams. Mm-hmm. You need, le- look to, need to look into um, how each leader's capabilities, um, competences, toolbox, and, and also motivation comes into play in that group dynamic. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's a new way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah, and education and training will be crucial, of course. And well, and there we see that there's a lot of in- initiatives uh, where the academic world is joining entrepreneurs to to yeah. be together with uh, with us uh, leadership programs to to move forward and mm-hmm. to help people also uh, because it's not just the leadership team that needs to be aware of sustainability. Finally, it should be in the culture. It should be in the mind of all people in the organization yeah. and very often you see at in the bottom of the organization you have already people doing small things in sustainability and also they are the leaders in sustainability mm-hmm. maybe they don't have the title but they are very important and it's up to the top management of course to create mm-hmm. the environment the space where that can thrive and where people yeah. can contribute in an yeah. open way in a different way with other methods than we used before because they won't work in the complex world we have. It's much more about open innovation. It's working together uh, mm-hmm. cross borders, cross countries. Uh, that's what we see in our own practice. Also, yeah. if we want to help customers, we need to do it differently than yeah. what we did before. And I also think a major conclusion here is that it has become and will become far more tricky to identify yeah. and also to select. So how and to do you these teams. identify? them you can identify them within the organization because some people are actually showing leadership already but if you have to look differently if you have to look outside if you have to look for other capabilities where do you start how, how do you what what's first, what what would be your advice first of all i think you need to look at the context uh-huh. where yeah. are we today yeah. and where do we want to be uh-huh. because you see that some people already or some organizations have already good setup mm-hmm. Others don't. So first of all, look quite 
and very good to the context, mm -hmm. the environment in which you are. An oil factory or is in or a steel factory, it's completely different than yeah. a banking environment than, than a people business or, mm -hmm. or a small uh, organization. So their context will define what you need mm -hmm. in terms of knowledge and experience. And okay. especially then we will define together with uh, customers what, according to your context, will be crucial mm -hmm. and define three, three to four key determining factors because it's not uh, a generic factor that would mm -hmm. be uh, good for everyone or for every organization. So the context will define what kind of key elements are crucial mm -hmm. to navigate for a leader in your specific uh, world yeah. to become a more sustainable company. Okay. So And then, of course, you need to go to look after them. And it's not in the traditional thinking that you will find those persons because they are not there. Mm -hmm. So you should be very creative and go uh, to other profiles where you see patterns which are important. Yeah. Um, like, for example, collaboration skills, the fluid intelligence, um, multi-stakeholder management will yeah. be much, much more important than it was before. Mm -hmm. And if you can go to that kind of patterns and then... Of course, people need to have a minimum of knowledge in sustainability, mm -hmm. but do not need to be the experts. So I think we will have different people filling in yeah. uh, roles for leadership of the future. Okay, and, and also very important, I think, if, if you want to build predictability into the, for instance, executive search and leadership development processes, mm -hmm. You need to overcome two problems uh, in, in, you can say, conventional executive search and, and, and talent development. And that is a diversity problem mm -hmm. and it's also a performance problem. Yes. Because of what we see from, from research is that more or less 40 to 50 percent of leaders who are uh, appointed, they will fail within 18 to 24 months. Yeah. And that is not in the, you can say, future situation where things are even more complex, uh, that they, you need to solve even more complex problems mm -hmm. as a leader. But, I mean, it's more like, or almost like a flip coin situation. Yeah. Um, so, so you need to overcome those two problems. And these two problems are based on, on you could say, three elements or three mistakes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and these three mistakes are, are basically shortcutting, it is stereotyping, and subjectivity. Yeah. So you need to have a factful tailored and systematic approach to executive search and also to leadership development. Also when you look into leadership development programs and mm -hmm. qualify leaders for these programs. Mm -hmm. Indeed, we talked about that in another episode, uh, leadership development with um, Nicolas and, uh, and Wout. Yeah, we were and talking about leadership development effectiveness. Yeah. Even more important yeah. in I, this uh, scene and this for area. For sure, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So to um, to wrap up this uh, podcast, governments, organizations and leaders may face the biggest challenge or you could call it opportunity actually in recent history to, to really act uh, and work on prosperity yeah. in a better world uh, actually um, for us, for ourselves and for future organizations. What would be your um, advice? How can leaders envision, uh, engage and guide people to do so, to, to act, to really act? What are your final words on this uh, topic? I think, first of all, it's about mindset. Uh -huh. It's about this being a value-based leader. You need to have a strong focus. You need to believe in what you're doing because uh -huh. otherwise you won't create followers in your organization. And if you don't create followers, you won't be able to, su to succeed in this transformational process that mm -hmm. is needed. And you won't be able to create followers outside your industry mm -hmm. among external stakeholders, for instance, NGOs, uh, governmental representatives, whatever uh, other network um, capacities and things like that. Then you also have to to accept the fact that your company, as, as we mentioned in the start, is part of a larger ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And therefore, your business need to basically be a force for good. Yeah. So you cannot just, just put product into the market that is... Uh, pure waste products and, and they just get rid of them uh, after 30 months, uh, three months or something like that. Um, you need to think in, in a circular way as well. Mm -hmm. uh, seeing your company in, in a circular transition as well. 
Um, but you also need to, as we talked about, being be very inclusive um, and, and, and collaborative in, in the way that you work as a leader. You don't have all the right answers. Mm-hmm. Is mm-hmm. it simply impossible? So you, you need to build very agile and diverse organizations. You need to make sure that you get people with very specific and high-skilled people with sustainability knowledge in, into the organizations. Um, but but you also need to have this multidisciplinary skill set yes. in your organization as well. Mm-hmm. So it's a combination. Okay. But but it starts there, I believe. Yeah, and it's role modeling, of course. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and and then of and course focus on on resiliency and, and equity is is uh, extremely important. Well, thank you uh, for listening or for watching. This was uh, yet another episode of our ZigZag HR podcast. If you're eager to stay ahead of the curve and help pivot your organization towards a very exciting future, be sure to tune in again and listen to other inspiring episode podcasts on this channel. And most importantly, don't forget, it's a great time to be in HR. HR.